Welcome back to the Gen 20 Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Marina. And today we're chatting with speaking coach Ray Fung about how to build your voice and tackle the fear of speaking up and speaking out. Hi. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here. Can you talk to us a little bit about your background and how you came to be a speaking coach? Sure. Oh my goodness, Marina and Nicole. I am so excited to be doing this podcast and I'm so honored to be here uh, on the Gen 20 podcast. And it's, it's pretty crazy that we're doing this in three different time zones. And I'm mm-hmm. like speaking from the future. So this is really cool. <laughs> she said um, it's looking bright. Okay. It's looking bright. It's looking yeah. very bright. It just rained, but still looking bright. <laughs> hey, we need that rain to grow. I'm mm-hmm. just excited for this good night's sleep ahead of me that I've been promised. <laughs> I assure you'll be a good night's sleep <laughs> after this after this conversation. So yeah, I'm Ray. I'm your speaking coach. And Uh, How did I become a speaking coach? I am going to say that there are a lot of things, a lot of challenges that has happened in my life that led me where I am today. But um, I would try my best to not share a novel, (laughs) probably save the novel for another day. But just to share a little bit about how I went from hiding in the background and not valuing my voice at all, not valuing myself at all, to now... Um, coaching people to own their voice and speaking on global stages, um, speaking on, speaking to, you know, students all around the world and stuff like that. So when I was younger, I I, I felt like I didn't, I wasn't good enough to speak up because um, born in a society where the metric of success and knowledge is great, um, the internships that you get, you know, how good are the jobs that you get, how cool you are in school if people come to you and talk to you and you're in the in click and I wasn't none of it like I didn't do very well in school um I saw my classmates getting A's you know receiving praises in class whereas for me like I studied really hard like I remember there was once in um junior college so there was um 16 17 years old I was so stressed about doing well because I was afraid that if I didn't get into university I was doomed for life So I studied till like 3 a.m. I had so many cups of tea. Every time during lunch break, I would just stay in class either to sleep because I was so tired or to study. And in a single month, I remember losing like 7 kg. So um, that is like two skirt sizes down because Mm -hmm. I was so stressed and I was so obsessed with doing well so that I could be good enough to take space, take up space in the world. And, And that was how I felt you know, for a huge part of my youth until at least at least I was 20, 21. And I think sometimes it's, it still does come up. So yeah, I was just a girl that hid in the background. And I remember that there were days um, when I was younger, I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror because I, I firstly hated how I looked. <laughs> I always saw flaws in the way I looked. I didn't see the value in my voice. I didn't want to waste people's time to say something and then they think I said something stupid and then they just continue and ignore the what I just said and continue the conversation. And I sort of let the smarter people that are more confident, more extroverted, um, more cool, I let them just take the lead. Yeah, so that was me back then. And um yeah, I don't know if if you have ever felt this way, you know, like feeling like everybody else is better than you and you have nothing worthy to say. That, that was how I felt, um, yeah, back then. And and now a word from our sponsors. Do you hate your job? Uh, do you feel like everyone around you has their career together and you're stuck in another soul-sucking job for what feels like a hundredth time? Are you asking yourself why it's so hard to find work that makes you happy? I want to tell you about my friend Serena and her program, Get Me Out of This Job. She's a career coach and her program, Get Me Out of This Job, helps you find confidence and clarity in the next steps of your career. Serena helps you build a career around your life instead of you feeling like you have to build your life around your career. And I did her program and it was life-changing. Before I worked with her, I worked nine to five jobs and just was so miserable. I couldn't figure out why I was so unhappy. I went from job to job. And then after I worked with her, I became an entrepreneur, a writer, an author, a podcaster, and just gave me so much clarity, I life-changing. So the best part is mention Gen 20 and you get 10% off your coaching package. Head to getmeoutofthisjob.co to learn more or follow her on Instagram at getmeout. So I, I started seeking like a lot of superficial ways to build my confidence, uh, which is 
like buying nice clothes, putting on makeup, um, having like a 12 step makeup routine. I then also started working in a club <laughs> where I gained a lot of confidence because guys would come to me and ask me, you know, can I have dance with you? Can I buy you a drink? And I sort of let that like build my confidence um, on these opinions of guys who I thought think I would, you know, think that I was attractive and then it just sort of built my confidence. Oh, you know, I'm good looking. Okay, people care about me. But the next day when you wake up, you know, you don't hear from them again and you're like, wait, mm -hmm. okay, so this wasn't real. I'm still someone that is not valued. And I think that was the spiral that I had for the longest of time. Um, and, and I think what really changed for me is, is two major things. The first thing is meeting mentors and coaches in my life that saw the potential in me beyond the way I look and beyond who I am at that moment. They didn't see me for who I am then. They saw me for like my potential and what I can be. And through, through speaking to mentors and coaches who are entrepreneurs, who have coached people to become entrepreneurs, um, they are the ones that started me on this journey of personal development and of even self-reflection, learning, reading books and listening to podcasts, which I did not back then. And, and you know, learning this knowledge and also sharing what I have to say to, to the world, to them first and then to the world. Um, and that's one major thing, choosing the right community, bumping into the right people. I'm so grateful that I did. And I think the second major thing that really changed everything for me was this huge eczema outbreak that I had in 2019. That was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I had a full body eczema outbreak. You can hit on my Instagram to see the photos. Basically, just imagine like a sunburn, but like 10 times worse, like peeling skin, red and raw. Oh, no. And I remember just waking up one day and like my entire bed was filled with like dead skin. And I just freaked out because I just felt so ugly in that moment. Like I knew that I probably had more self-love than years ago. But in that moment, when I saw myself in the mirror and I was like a swollen red peeling lobster I was like so scared and I didn't know what was going on I felt so ugly that I refused to stop wearing makeup even though I know that if I wore makeup and I took the makeup off at the end of the day I'll be removing the new skin that was grown and I would basically restart the healing process and the raw skin is going to show again and I still did it because in a sense I contributed my wins or my opportunities to my looks maybe in that moment I didn't completely see what I had my skills or my knowledge or my being as valuable so I still sort of think that my looks um, contributed to my success uh, or any successes that I had but in that moment of complete vulnerability I received a lot of love you know from my parents um, I remember my dad would spread manuka honey all over my body, trying to see if it worked. My mom would, um, yeah, like sweep all the dead skin from my bed. And basically in the moments that I felt like I wanted to whine and not do anything, they were the ones that loved me for who I am. Um, and also that seeing that love that I got for who I am, even in that moment, also encouraged me to take that step of courage to continue doing what I love and went out there to train in school. So I did life skills training in schools, attended networking events, basically do the things that I was already doing, even if I looked like a red lobster. And when I did that, I was so pleasantly surprised that people didn't even bother about how I looked. They just focused on the conversation we had. I had so many good conversations deep conversations with people, with strangers that I met at networking events, like-minded people who are also serving the community. And they didn't care about how I looked. They didn't even ask me about how I looked. They just focused on the conversation. And I think that's what really showed me that people, if you find the right people, if you vibe with the right people, they, they will value you for who you are and not how you look. Um, and that can only start happening of course, when you value how, when you value yourself. 
So I think that how you value yourself matters. So when I saw the value in what I say, in the impact that I had to others, when I saw my value in how I serve others and contribute to the world, and I focused on others instead of myself, I, I started seeing value in, you know, my contribution, my service to the world, which is being a speaking coach, doing the networking uh, workshops that I did and all of that. And I, I sort of forget how I look. It's like, I don't even think about how I look anymore because I'm just focusing on the audience. And when that happened, more people who saw my value, like got attracted to me and then that's how my business grew. And then magically my eczema disappeared because I think I became happier and I cared less about how I looked. So that is basically um, a little snippet of how I became a speaking coach. Um, I know how it's like to feel small and feel afraid to speak up. And I just never want anybody to like belittle their potential, to belittle their voice and to belittle their story because all of us have a unique story to share no matter how small we, th- we think it is or no matter how inexperienced or young you think you are since you're 20 something you have value to share and there are going to be people that would relate to you and not relate to someone that is like 50 plus and that's why you have a place in this world and your voice has a seat at the table yeah so that's that's how I became a speaking coach <laughs> I love that um yeah and Ray something you said while you were explaining like how you got your start really hit me where you said you were afraid to that were you afraid for your voice to take up space you felt like you didn't have the value to share and I think that is really common among younger people especially women because because the patriarchy ruins everything. I'll say it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. But also, I know for me, when I was a kid growing up, I was kind of like society showed me that I should be seen and not heard. If I was that, like, I was told I talked too much in class and that I was bossy and like too opinionated. And those are actually really good things. Like, it's good for your children to have opinions and to be curious. Mm. But there was constant like negative reinforcement, I would get like in trouble or scolded anytime I spoke up and I became really conflict averse and believed I didn't have anything valuable to say. And it took me a really long time to get more comfortable with, actually it was starting our podcast, Nicole, that made me more comfortable with the sound of my own voice where I was like, yeah, I have thoughts. I'm going to share them. (laughs) So, so really thrilled that like your story just resonates with me so much. And I think Nicole can talk about, you know, the importance of feeling heard as a 20 something. Yeah, I think one thing that you were saying that I feel like really stuck with me was that when you were talking about not feeling good enough, I think that is a feeling that most of us, if not everyone, has felt at some time. Like, I think it's a universal feeling, right? And for a lot of us, it probably happens really early in life, like elementary school, middle school like I know that in class like I would never raise my hand because well I was so afraid of being wrong first of all yeah because you know like you're sitting there and you're so sure you know the answer and someone else answers they say something completely different and you're like wow god it wasn't me so (laughs) relatable (laughs) Mm -hmm. the wrong answer um and I think a lot of things can like stem from that because we it's like so encouraged to be right versus wrong and I think that's something that holds people back from reaching their value. Like you can probably speak a little more to that because like as 20 somethings, it can be really hard to find your voice and you're still learning so much about yourself and the world around you and how you fit into it. So what, where do you start with that? What advice do you give people? Hmm. You know, one thing that you mentioned, which is right versus wrong and that, that feeling of wanting to say something and then you wait, you wait, you're like, okay, Let me say it, let me say it. And then the weight becomes so painful before you actually speak up. um, And you start feeling that heat up your chest and someone Mm -hmm. else answers and you realize that it's completely different. Wow, like that is something that happens so often to me and I think a lot of my clients as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you mentioned that called out to me is 
being afraid of being wrong. But what if there's no right or wrong opinion, right? Um, I think that opinions are opinions and everybody everybody's opinions are valid. Um, of course, if it's a question on facts, yeah, okay, perhaps it's right or wrong. Um, but in terms of like opinions and ideas, I think it's important to first know that your opinions are valid, other people's opinions are valid, and your opinions are built via the influences of your culture, of your stories, of your challenges, of everything that you go through, and their opinions are built off their experiences, their unique culture, their unique um, you know, stuff that they go through. So it's important to first know that your opinions are valid. And logically, you guys are just different, you and this other person that you're comparing yourself to, if you are. And just because the other person is louder doesn't mean that your voice doesn't matter. So I think that's important to first note um, as you're in the process of finding your voice, you know, is to know that your your voice matters. So I think that the first thing um, to find your voice is to acknowledge that you have a voice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. I think it's very important. <laughs> yeah, to acknowledge you have a voice. Um, sometimes you might feel like you don't have one because perhaps all your life you've been trying to fit in and mold yourself to other people's opinions. Uh, I remember when I was in in secondary school, so that's like around, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. Whenever people are, said something about a movie or something new that's upcoming, instead of actually thinking, oh, what do I think about this movie? I would just go, Oh, yeah, 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 it's very good, it's very good. Oh, yes, 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 I, I watched it already. Oh, I loved it too. Oh, I love this too. It's like, my favorite phase is, I love this too, you know? It's like, I will always agree mm-hmm. and just try to hype it up and agree because I didn't want to give a differing opinion. I wanted to fit in. So that might be a reason why you feel like you don't have a voice because all your life you could have been just agreeing and fitting in and not really asking yourself, hey, what do I think about this? What do I really think about this? What's my opinion about this? So I think number one is to acknowledge you have a voice, even if you feel like you don't have one. The second thing is to look within yourself and know that your voice already is within yourself. So seek seek your voice internally as opposed to externally. Yeah, so... Ask yourself, um, looking inwards, hey, what are the topics that I love talking about? What are the things that I usually feel energized speaking about? What are the books and the movies or the people that are like hanging around? Because those are hints. Those are hints to what your unique voice is about. And, you know, I realized I didn't really talk about what exactly makes your unique voice. But essentially, your unique voice includes your metaphorical voice and your physical voice. Your physical voice is how you sound, like your tone. Um, Some people have a really good storytelling voice. Like when you hear them speak, you feel like you can trust them and you're safe with them. And that's your gift. Some people, their their unique physical voice is just very loud and extroverted. And they probably will will make great presenters and hosts and DJs. But... Yeah, that is basically your physical voice, your tone, um, and how you sound, your diction, etc. Uh, but what's very important is knowing that you also have a unique metaphorical voice. And that's your unique story, your unique thoughts, your unique opinions about things that you care about. Um, and that is something that you want to start building uh, starting from today. So knowing that you have, number one, knowing that you have a unique voice and it's somewhere inside of you, and it just might be hiding under all the dogma, the you know the, the stereotypes in the world, expectations. And the second thing to start finding that unique voice is to look internally and ask yourself the tough questions. It's really the journaling, you know, the boring stuff, right? But it's so important. Um, hey, looking back in the past week, in the past month, what are the topics that interest me? What do I naturally scroll on Instagram? What do I naturally Google about? What do I naturally talk to others about? When I talk to others about this topic, do I feel excited? Yeah, and that, that those are the two things to actually start 
finding your voice. Ray, you are talking about the physical voice, which really I never thought about before, but like I am a pretty quiet talker. And I remember back in my first job in my early 20s, I worked on a, in a big open office. We were all talking on the phone all the time. And I would speak very quietly and very, I don't know, soothingly because I found that customers calling in would be less likely to be mean if I was like calm and collected. <laughs> but I noticed that in my team, when I would talk to my coworkers, I often got spoken over. Like I would be telling a story or something and someone would just inter- interject and talk over me because I wasn't loud. And so I would, I got really intimidated. And I think that can be really common when you're younger and especially if you're like the younger side of on your team or in the workplace. So while we're working on our finding our voices physical and and not, what's a way that we can build the confidence to to use those voices that we're finding? And now a word from our sponsor. Fandemonium Design creates wonderfully nerdy artwork that won't freak out your dinner party guests. Products including newly launched notebooks are stunning, chic, and wholly celebrate beloved moments in fandom. Visit www.fandemoniumdesign.com to see the full collections and be sure to join the adventure on Instagram at Fandemonium Design. Wow. Um, yeah, th- that's a great question, right? Especially when you mention about maybe the louder people talking over you. Actually, that exact fear um, is something that one of my coaches shared with me. And mm-hmm. to answer your question, I want to give a specific example to what she did so she's someone that's you know as an introvert and she also finds herself in meetings wanting to say something and then an extrovert will come okay i'm not going to stereotype extroverts and introverts but basically a louder person someone that's more loud will Mm -hmm. end up speaking first and then she feels like her voice can't be heard and it's just so awkward because especially now in this um online world when you unmute yourself and you speak and then everybody else is speaking, it's just, you can't, you can't be heard. So she has sort of developed strategies to find ways to be heard. So one of the ways that she, that she, she actually implemented was she asked her, her manager if she could host a social. So I think there are these like team building events where, uh, you know, uh, one of the, one of one of the people in the team can come up and host like an event. So she actually hosted a plant social because she loves plants, right? And what this means is that basically they just go on Zoom and just share about plants, right? So people who love plants will just come on and talk about plants, share about, you know, stories about plants and stuff like that. And when she decided to be the leader and be the one that hosts the plant social, basically she has the mic to actually give it to other introverts that didn't manage to speak up as often too. So she's now like the holder of the mic. You know, she has that control in that sense because she's the host. So that's one good way to like find strategies and and work around um, um, your unique voice and find out how to leverage your unique voice and the strength that you have. Confidence to speak up. Like, think about this. If let's say your strength is speaking in a one-on-one setting, then start with that first. Because imagine if you're in a team and you have a huge team. If let's say you know the people better one-on-one, you actually have more confidence to speak up in a group of people that consists of those one-on-ones. So that was what happened for me. I remember when I um, joined, when I joined the new church back then, um, years ago, I entered and they were just all strangers and I felt so scared to speak up because I felt like everybody already knew each other. So what I did was I started just having a conversation with one person. And then once I had a conversation with one person, that person introduced me to another person. And then slowly, slowly, my relationships were built via those one-on-one connections. And because those one-on-one connections knew me and the conversations we had, in a group setting, they'll actually pay attention more to what I say because they know me and they have a relationship with me. So that is one way. It's like a very practical way to um, build relationships within the crowd before, you know, you speak up. So, um, yeah, I think that's one way first. You know, I'll just share that way first because I think there's a lot of other ways to build the confidence. But 
that's a very practical tip to like navigate your voice, knowing what works, what doesn't. If you're someone that's a little bit more, in a sense, you know, calm and quiet, then use it to your advantage. People will probably love to have conversations with you one-on-one, you know, and then you can use your voice in like a bigger setting. Yeah, that's what I would share. Yeah, I love that. And I, um, as you were talking, I thought about um, something that happened in the political scape here in the US, um, mm. which I don't like to talk about, but there's this quote where Kamala Harris was, I think, Nicole, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but someone was speaking, talking over her and she just said, I'm still speaking. And I think that was iconic and a good reminder. That's what I started to do once I realized wow. that I had, that I was like, oh, even though I'm quiet, I still have something to say. I would just, I started just repeating myself until people heard Yes. Me. Oh my goodness. Perfect. I love it. I just wrote it down. I'm just going to paste it somewhere. <laughs> I love I'll it. It's so the, iconic. I'll find the quote and send it to you after, Ray. Yay. Thank you. And you know, that is great because um, if let's say you're in a Zoom meeting and you start saying something, but someone else says it first, you may, I think that we may actually feel tempted to just not say anything. But if we, if we stop ourselves then we actually create that belief in our mind that, hey, I shouldn't speak up because someone's going to talk over me. And you, your brain will then latch onto that memory and in future, you're going to speak up softer again. Whereas if you, in, in a sense, insist to speak, like, hey, you know, like I have an opinion about this and you, you say it anyway after maybe the next person speaks, then I think that creates um, a positive memory in your mind that, hey, you can speak up and you have the confidence to speak up. So very often, confidence, it really stems from action and courage. Having the courage to take that small step of action, to do it anyway, even if you have fear, so that you'll be one step closer to being more confident in that action. Yeah, confidence really comes from courage and taking action. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think that it really does take those like, even those little positive individual moments to really try to build your voice, which I think is so important to do in your 20s because like, so what kind of make me think about this is that my son, he was born with a really rare birth defect. And so we're going through a whole process with him of things, but we have to really advocate for him. And I feel like I've had to use my voice more for him than I ever have for myself. And you just talking about all this just makes me like wonder like what I can even start doing now um, and what people who are younger in their 20s can start doing to begin advocating for themselves more. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think that what you said about you wanting to use your voice for your son um, and you think about that more than you, that, that's, a, that's a great point. And that's something that if you're listening, you can think about as well, because one of my coaches, she, has, she actually told me that she doesn't really stand up for herself very much. Actually, that, that is the reason why, you know, she's she has had bad relationships because she doesn't speak up for herself. But on the contrary, if let's say a colleague is the one that is being put down, she will want to stand up and speak up and stand up for that person. So sometimes like, you speaking up is like you need to have a cause to speak up. Maybe that's you. Like you feel for a certain cause or you feel for people and, and those environments or those like ch- not really challenge but opportunities would put you in a position to speak up. And find ways to explore and understand yourself better. See when you you have that urge to speak up and allow yourself to if let's say you have that urge. Basically, don't dampen your urge. Like, if you feel like speaking up, mm-hmm. speak up. I think that's important. Um, yeah, if you feel like speaking up, speak up. But in the point of my coachy not speaking up for herself, I actually mentioned to her, can you imagine yourself as the third person? Yeah, so I think sometimes it's important, mo- all the time it's important to speak up for yourself when the context requires it too. And imagine that you are like speaking up for it the second version of yourself, if let's say you don't speak up for yourself. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I like that. I like that as like a general exercise where you're kind of like, it's sort of easier to do things for yourself if you're thinking about yourself as like a third person. 
you know like because like like, it's not as personal yeah it's always easy to like defend someone else than to like defend yourself but I think if we all were to work on our confidence and our like validate our opinions and remind ourselves that what we have to say is just as important as whatever someone else is saying it would get a lot easier to say hey actually no I this is what I want to say or no you can't speak to me that way or all the things we don't let ourselves say Mm, yeah like and I just want to assure you listening to this right now that it is completely normal to feel afraid to speak up it's completely normal to um, be afraid that what you say is not going to be valuable and it's going to waste someone's time because I felt this way before you're like it's, it's it's completely normal to feel this way and for one of my coaches I think he's already 30 plus but he also still feels this way so I realized that when I ask him questions he always just answers one sentence and doesn't elaborate and I would be like uh yeah so why (laughs) you know it's like it's an incomplete answer so I pointed this out to him and he's he's like oh yes I realize I do that if if, let's say it's kind of like basically I'm I called him out loud okay so I told him basically what you're doing is you're saying oh you know um something so great happened at work today and then he doesn't continue (laughs) and someone needs to like say oh so what happened (laughs) something like that and and then he continues saying so I was wondering why he did that and he told me he realized that he was afraid if he continued elaborating that the person he's talking to actually didn't have interest in what he said or think that it's a waste of time and I asked him if it has happened to him before where he said something and people actually think it's a waste of time or dismissed it and he said yes Right, it has happened to him before back then at work. I think he mentioned an idea and opinion and the entire group of people that he was talking to in this group, they, they sort of just dismissed it and carried on with the conversation. And that negative experience affirmed his belief that hey, what I say does not matter. So I feel like if you're listening to this, it's important to look back and ask yourself, where do the where does my fear and my limiting belief of I can't speak up, I should not speak up, um, my voice doesn't matter, where does it come from? Yeah, like, does it come from any incidents in the past? And are you holding on to that incident that's causing you to um, be stuck in speaking up? So for him, I asked him, hey, how, what if you operated from the belief that what you say does matter? How would you speak up? I think that's important to start choosing a new belief. And I know it doesn't sound as easy as it is, uh, but it first takes courage to decide to let go of that old belief that's not serving you and choose the new one and then take little steps to confirm that new one in your mind or to strengthen that new belief in your mind. So one thing that he did to build that courage, well, this one I'm so proud of him because I, I nudged him to do so and I, of course, gave him the <laughs> all the love and the affirmation and the skills to do this, like teach him the skills and do the role plays. I actually asked him to go to the bookstore because he loves reading and start conversations with people that end up beside him in the aisles of the bookstore. And he did that. Like, it's crazy. He like he was so afraid of initiating conversations, but he did that. He started having conversations with people in the bookstore, in the gym, and he realized that he can have good conversations and those people did not judge him and did not dismiss what he had to say. And that those incidents, those positive experiences actually prove to him that his voice does matter. So I think this just shows that once again, confidence is built in small increments. Confidence is built through the little tangible things that you do every day, even if they're a little bit uncomfortable. And when you take those little steps towards building confidence, which essentially is building positive experiences of you speaking up in your mind, your future self will thank you because you realize that years from now, you're more confident than you are today. That's such, such great advice. I'm all about the positive like affirmations and the positive like proof um, that you kind of, sh- it's like, po- like, it's like muscle building, right? Like it's like muscle memory. You do something, you have a positive reaction. You learn that you can do it more. So 
Ray, I know people are going to want to continue to follow along with you. Where can they find you? Great. Yeah, please do reach out to me. The conversation doesn't end here. Uh, I think if Marina and Nicole and I were to speak about this, we probably can speak about it forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like hours. Lives, <laughs> up. Um, yeah, okay. Please do reach out to me on Instagram. It's my favorite social media platform. And my Instagram handle is Ray matrix yes so you can find me there and let me know if I, I think one thing that you could do to to start getting some free resources is i would just suggest coming and join my private telegram channel because i put a lot of digital resources there templates how to find your unique voice is a template that i have in my private telegram channel so drop me a message on instagram and i'll add you in or i'll actually just send the the form to Marina and Nicole, and they can add it in wherever it's added in in, in the notes. Uh, so yeah, um, come speak to me. Let me know if you're going through anything and you're afraid of speaking up and um, I'll always reply. Awesome. Yes, we will definitely have all of that added in the show notes too, so people can click on the links. And um, Nicole, do you want to sing us out? Sure thing. This has been another episode of the Gen 20 Podcast. Uh, We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.